Hey guys, what's up? It's Iflin here, and welcome to episode 3 of my Warframe The Ultimate Beginner's Guide 2.0. In today's video, we're going to be talking about progressing through Venus, and I'm going to give you a few tips here and there to help you get through it a little smoother. And speaking of tips to help you through your playthrough of Warframe, that was a good segue into what we're going to talk about. So, that music, this is a thing called Nightwave, and this is basically Warframe Season Pass except you don't have to pay for it. Mind blowing, right? A season pass where you don't have to spend money? That's crazy, dude. No way, tell me more. So in this uh, Nightwave thing, the season pass, we have a bunch of challenges that we have to complete. There's daily challenges and there's also weekly challenges. Don't stress out about not completing everything as a newer player, but just know that this does exist. And the more you complete challenges, the more rewards you're gonna get. So for example, you have these intermission credits, which you can use to then spend on offerings here, right? So for example, we can get aura mods, which are mods that have like uh, passive bonuses basically. So this one, for example, is a really good one. Uh, Warframe energy regenerates at 0.6 energy per second, right? So that is a really good mod to have. This mod is also going to increase the amount of capacity that you can have on your Warframe, right? So if we go back down into the modding section, right we go to upgrade we can see that we have this slot right here but if we try to throw on like i don't know enemy sense or something onto it we can't because it says that this slot is reserved for aura mods right so aura mods are basically mods that have an effect and that effect affects your entire team so if you had that energy siphon mod which gave you that 0.6 percent uh, or 0.6 energy per second and then your teammate had that on as well the effect would stack right so you get 1.2 energy per second right pretty cool so you want to go out of your way to make sure that you are doing your challenges and your weekly challenges your daily challenges and your weekly challenges as uh, much as you can right because working your way up these uh these rewards is going to be beneficial in the long run because we also have other things here like auric and catalyst and auric and reactors which again you can use to upgrade the capacity off your warframe and your weapons right so we also have other things affinity boosters you can see that we had slots on there as well slots was something that i talked about uh in the first episode of this guide um you have to use the premium currency platinum to get those and this night we have season pass thing is basically handing you one right so it's very important uh, to make sure that you are making progress in your night wave as much as you can. Again, don't stress about not getting everything done. This does come in seasons. So like if you miss something, there's going to be an opportunity to get it again in the next season off night wave, right? So it's not like you're going to be necessarily missing out because things have returned from previous night wave seasons such as cosmetics. So the first night wave season that we had was called the Wolf of Saturn 6. And here is the Wolf of Saturn 6 uh, cosmetic sets right here. So the Cyan Dana and the armor. But uh, the consumable stuff like the working reactors, the Forma and whatnot, like that is always going to be there no matter the night wave season. And you're always going to be able to work towards that. So just wanted to let you guys know that this here system does exist and uh, you should be making progress towards it as soon as you possibly can. So yeah, very important to note. But that being said, Let's talk about progressing through Venus. Venus is your first planet that is owned by the Corpus, which is a different faction uh, compared to the Grenier. So the Grenier are enemies that have a yellow health bar. They have armor, where the Corpus are these enemies that have like a helmet on at all times. And they have a red and blue health bar. So that means they have shield. And then beneath those shields is their fleshy health, right? So on Venus... Ignore all of the, the blinking blue things for now and go right over to the Mercury Junction so we can find out what we have to do to unlock this junction. So we have to defeat Jackal at Fusa on Venus. So let's find out where Fusa is. Fusa is all the way over here. So we have to make our way down Egit, Under, Kilikin, Aphrodite, and uh, then finally at Fusa. So we can do that one. We got to complete 10 waves of defense at Tessera on Venus in a single mission. So we got to do Egit, then stay for 10 waves on Tessera. We've got uh, rescue a hostage at Linea on Venus. So yeah, after Tessera, we got to go to Linea 
And then after that, we have to defeat the five Xmas enemies. Now, the Xmas enemies one is probably going to be the easiest thing uh, in this episode to do. So I recommend farming these Xmas enemies on the first node in Phoenix, which is Egate. And I'm going to jump in and show you guys what these Xmas enemies look like right now. Okie dokie, so around this corner I found my uh, second Xmas enemy because in my first run I actually killed one without even noticing. But an Xmas enemy is an enemy that's going to have like a slight red glow around them. If you look really closely you can sort of see a red glow. And they're going to have an elemental effect applied to them as well. So um, this one is quite clearly uh, an ice Xmas, so it's got like a nice little bubble around itself which means we can't shoot it from the outside so we have to go in close and kill it that way so those enemies are meant to be stronger than your average enemies um but as you can see well uh that guy's quite dead so don't worry too much about coming up against them just uh press e and they're probably gonna die but uh yeah talk to you guys back in the ship all right, so like I mentioned, all you want to be doing is running that mission until you kill all five Xmas enemies. I had four of them killed already because I did go and complete some more nodes on Earth. So I completed all the way up to uh, Cervantes here. So I completed Koba, Everest, Cervantes, uh, Eurasia. And then, of course, we did the Cetus and the Plains of Eidolon stuff in the last episode. I also did Lilith as well, or Lyft, sorry. Lyft, this is the one that I to two and then that was basically all i did on earth and then i move right on to venus and uh our next thing is to complete the 10 waves of defense at tessera on venus in a single mission so we're gonna go ahead and jump in and do that all right so i wanted to take the time that i have in this mission to talk to you guys a little bit about rotations within warframe in endless missions right so any mission that can go on forever like a defense mission a survival mission an excavation mission an interception mission etc uh these missions all have rotations to them right and what i mean by rotations is like a drop table that the mission is going to pull from whenever you hit a certain milestone right so whenever we finish we have five we are going to get reward from drop table a Whenever we finish we have 10, we're going to get reward from drop table A. Whenever we finish uh, we have 15, we're going to get a reward from drop table B. And then whenever we finish we have 20, we're going to get a reward from drop table C, right? So the rotation is 5 rounds A, 10 rounds A, 15 rounds B, and then 20 rounds C. So you're going to get rewarded for each of those milestones that you hit. So that's the end of our fifth wave now, right? So we got the reward, a lift M4 relic. That reward was from drop table A. So now if we continue on by pressing that right uh, little battle symbol or battle image right there, whenever we get to we have 10 and we finish that, not only are we going to get the reward that we got on we have 5, but we're also going to get another reward from drop table A at wave 10, right? So if you're a badass, ideally what you want to be doing in this type of mission, in an endless mission, is staying 20 waves in your defense or 20 minutes in a survival mission, doing four excavators in excavation, or staying for four rounds in interception, right? Because every single time that you stay until that rotation C, you're getting at least one reward from each table that is available in said mission, right? So these drop tables are going to change up. Like what rewards are in said drop tables are going to change up based on the level of enemies that you're going to be fighting, right? So they're still going to be called drop table A, drop table B, drop table C, you know, that type of thing. But they're just going to drop different stuff based on the uh the level of enemies that you're going up against if that makes any sense right so the deeper you go into the star chart that's when your rewards are going to start to change got it so it's only like the base level that affects that as you go on in an endless mission the enemies levels are going to get higher but that's not going to change the uh rewards that you get from said drop tables right so if i were to stay in this mission until the enemies were level 100 like i would still be getting the lift relics that i was getting from 
drop table A. It wouldn't change to the upgraded versions of Relics or anything like that. But, um, you know, I would still be getting a ton of rewards that would hold their value over time. That's the thing with a lot of stuff in Warframe. Like, even though that this is a low-level mission, you're going to be getting stuff here that you're going to be able to use later on in your playthrough that are going to hold their value all the way up until uh, end game in quotation marks. So, you know, if you're the type of player who likes uh, pushing themselves to the limit, then I would recommend staying until uh, rotation C every single time you can in uh, an endless mission to get the most out of it, right? Unless you're farming for something specific that drops from like drop table A or B or something like that, right? So, you know, just from a pure completionist and efficiency standpoint, I'm going to recommend that you guys stay until like we have 20 if you can. You want to be careful of that though, because like I said, the longer you stay in an endless mission, the higher the enemy's levels are going to get. So it might become a little bit difficult for you later on. In the lower levels, it shouldn't matter too much, especially whenever you start to throw on more mods and upgrade your mods and stuff like that. It shouldn't you know, be too difficult for you because, of course, these enemies level is very, very low to begin with. But as they start to scale up, they're going to start to deal a lot more damage and are going to have a lot more health. And unless you're modding your Warframe, your weapons correctly, then it's going to be harder for you to stay. So I don't recommend in a defense mission going past 20 waves. I don't recommend in a survival mission going past 20 minutes. I don't recommend in an excavation mission going past uh, four excavators. And in an interception mission, I don't recommend going past uh, four rounds, right? So just limit yourself at going to one rotation C per endless run. And then later on, whenever you've uh, got a shit ton of gear and you're ready to take on higher level enemies, then you can think about like doing repeat um, rotations, right? Because like once you hit that weave 20, and let's say you go on the weave 25, you're pulling from drop table A again, right? So 25 is A, 30 is A, and then so on and so forth, right? So I'm just going to go ahead, get the weave 10, and then that is going to be our uh, next junction requirement completed. And then we'll talk about doing the next one. So I will see you guys back in the ship. All right. So now that we've completed our 10 wheels off defense on Tessera, all we got to do now is go ahead and rescue a hostage, basically doing a rescue mission on uh, Linea. And then we got to make our way from Egit all the way over to Fosa to kill the boss there. So I'm going to go ahead, jump in, rescue this hostage, and then uh, we'll make our way over the Fosa. All right, so this is the holding cell for where the hostage is. I'm going to show you guys like a little shortcut into the cell so you don't have to stand and hack that little console and make yourself look like an idiot. Shortcut is very obvious. Come down that vent and then come in here. Look up, bullet jump on up, and then hack the doors. And then um, you should find the hostage at either of the two. So probably this one. Hey, look, there he is. And if you forgot how to play a rescue mission since the first episode, all you got to do is just sprint to the exit now. Like, uh, this isn't an escort mission, so you don't actually have to wait for this guy to catch up and follow you and whatnot. Just sprint to the exit. He's going to teleport behind you. Uh, don't bother giving him a gun, because if you give him a gun, then he will stand and fight, and he will get himself killed. So just get to the exit as fast as possible. You know, use your slash dash ability to propel yourself forward and... Do your little bullet jump loop. And then, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys back in the ship. Haha, -ha, I lied. We're not actually back in the ship. The next mission after, I think it was E-Gate, that I had to do to get the Fusa was a spy mission. And spy missions are going to change based on the planet that you're on, right? So I figured that it was worth showing you guys the, uh, the spy missions that I got uh, in my first run and show you guys how to complete them, right? So... Let's just go ahead and make our way into the first vault. You don't actually have to be stealthy whenever you're making your way to the vault, by the way. You just have to be stealthy in the vault. So this here one, pretty straightforward. There's two doors. You can only go through one of them. Go for the first door, and there should be a vent. Go ahead, hop up to the vent, and you want to make yourself uh, go over that way. Okay, so we're over here. Now what we want to drop uh, or do is jump down to this door, hack it. Go inside, make sure that there's no camera in there. Go through this vent here. Hack this console to open the door to our left. And then we walk on in. 
and grab the data. That's uh, pretty much it. So in later levels, there's going to be a lot more security in this specific vault. You're going to do it pretty much the same way, but there might be a few extra obstacles like the camera that I talked about. So just pay attention for that if you're doing this type of mission later on. So let's go ahead and make our way to the next vault and uh, we'll talk then. All right, so we are at our second vault. Let's go ahead, hack our way in. This one's got an elevator. We go down the elevator. What we can do is we can watch out for the two vents here. Go ahead and go inside there. Break this one open. Hop up to the top of this little thing in the center. Drop on down. And we want to avoid the lasers, so insert spy music here. Just hop on down. Don't get hit by the laser. And then hack the vault pretty straightforward. So that's the second vault done. On to the third one. Okay, we are at our third and final vault. Go ahead, hack our way in. So we got a camera here. Make sure to destroy that. We got another camera over there. Tack that one out. We've got the lasers, so we wait for it to turn off. Walk on free. Sometimes lasers can happen there as well, but that is probably at the uh, the higher levels. Hack this console. Turn around. Go for this door, and then hack the vault in here. So there's something to be said about the rewards that you can get from spy missions. Uh, you're gonna have to do spy missions a decent bit to get a few items, such as. Uh, Warframe blueprints and also um, damage mods, right? So elemental damage mods. Um, remember how we talked about the rotations in endless missions such as survival, defense, interception, excavation, etc. So spy missions pretty much do the same thing where they have the three different tables. They have A, B, and C. But you would think that if you opened up uh, Vault A, then you would get a drop from Drop Table A. It's not actually like that at all. So if you open up one vault, you're going to get a drop from Drop Table A. If you open up two vaults, you're going to get a drop from Drop Table A and Drop Table B. If you open up three, you get one from A, B, and C. So let's say, for example, you complete uh, Vault A, right? So that is your Drop Table A that you got from. You feel B but then you complete C, you're going to get drops from drop tables A and B, opposed to drop tables A and C. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, ideally, just get all three vaults open to get the most rewards. But um, other than that, that was uh, that spy mission and also uh, spy drops and rotations explained. So I'll see you guys back on the ship. Okie dokie, so I've completed all of the nodes leading up to Fusa and I actually just did a trial run off Fusa to make sure that we could kill the boss with the loadout that I currently have equipped and we can indeed do it. So I'm going to show you guys what I currently have on my Warframe just so you can get an idea uh, as to what you should be running and what level I am with my frame uh, before I jumped into doing uh, that boss right so my Excalibur is currently rank 11 I've got a vitality which is leveled up twice a broken flow a broken continuity and a broken stretch on now what I could do is I could throw on redirection as well just to give myself a little bit more shields but shields aren't necessarily that great in Warframe they're good at the beginning of the game but whatever you get later on um, they're not going to be as good right so it's usually health over shields all the time as for my weapons, I've only got a Broken Serration, a Stormbringer mod on, a Bane of Corpus mod, because Corpus is the faction that we're up against. On my Lado, I've got my Hornet Strike mod on, which is broken. I could throw on my Heated Charge mod or my Broken Convulsion. I'm going to throw on the Broken Convulsion just because. And then my Scanna, I've got a, a Ranked Up Twice Pressure Point, and I can throw Fury on here as well to rank up the attack speed right so i can attack just a little bit faster which is pretty nice i've also managed to get my exalted blade unlocked this is excalibur's fourth ability which we can mod separately right so it's actually got uh an orkin catalyst installed which doubles the mod capacity of it so it's rank 16 times that by two we get the 32 pretty cool so if we throw on pressure point then it's gonna up the damage of it right so for on fury as well for on north winds to give it a little bit of cool damage and then we can throw on this mod as well just because we have it laying around so all we want to do now 
is uh, go do the FUSA mission. Go to navigation, go to FUSA. I'll talk to you guys when we're at the bus. All right, so we are just outside the room that the boss spawns in. You can clearly see him, like, just sitting there. Uh, he's not a very difficult boss, but I will say this before we jump into it. Don't panic if you die, because you have four revives, and all it costs you to revive is a little bit of XP that you earned in the mission, right? So you're not actually losing out on anything that you can't get back by reviving yourself mid-mission. You can only revive yourself up to four times, so all we want to do walk up to this guy let the little animation play I'm gonna skip it I like to stun him with my second ability up front and then I just whack his legs with my melee until he falls down and then you just keep on going basically um, he's gonna hit the ground and whenever he hits the ground just jump away and then shoot him with your your bratton or your bull or whatever and then just keep on whacking at him and that's basically the boss you know jump shoot let's go for another Bow shot. Cool. He's down in the ground again. Awesome. Keep on whacking him. Down again. Go for the legs, of course. Let's uh, get hit by the shockwave that time. That was unfortunate. So what you can do is I can either stun him again or I can use my exalted blade. And just because I want to show it off, I'm going to use the exalted blade uh, whenever he gets back up and I hopefully don't get killed by those missiles, right? So... Maybe we won't need to use it. Actually, we will. Okay, so um, he's going to do a stun. We use our fourth ability. Shoots his rockets again. And we just go ahead and uh, swing at him with our Exalted Blade. And hopefully he will uh, fall down. Uh-oh. We got knocked into that little thing there. If you get knocked off of the map, like I just did, what happens is the ability that you had active, or active, in our case, the Exalted Blade... Uh, it's just going to be taken down, pretty much. So, that was it. We killed the boss. Um, really easy. Not uh, too difficult, at least in my opinion. But then again, I've been playing this game for six years, so... What the I know about difficulty. But, um, yeah, got to hack this console. At the end of the mission, you're going to be rewarded with a... Part blueprint for the Warframe called Rhino. The one that we killed on the Venus Junction. That was on Earth, like our first like mini boss, I guess you could say. And uh, you need to get the neuroptics, the chassis, and the system. So it's worth rerunning this mission again to get all of the part blueprints for the Warframe called Rhino. The systems is the rarest part. The neuroptics and the chassis share, I believe it's a 32% chance to drop. And then the systems has a 28% chance to drop. So, yep. So let's see what we get. We ended up getting... The systems, so we got lucky. Awesome. So, um, yeah, I'll see you guys back in the ship. Okie dokie. So we're back in the ship after killing the Jackal. What happens after you kill that boss for the first time? You're going to get a message from a spooky boy called the Stalker. This guy is an enemy who is going to show up completely randomly in your mission. Your screen is going to flash black. And then this guy is going to spawn in and say that you need to pay for your sins. And he's going to try to kill you. If you kill him... There's going to be a very big chance that you get a blueprint for the weapon called the Dread, which is a bow and arrow. It's really strong. Make sure that if you get that to craft it as soon as possible because it will carry you through some content. There is other stuff that you can drop, but um, they're not that noteworthy, I would say. But look out for the weapon called the Dread that this guy drops if you manage to end up killing him. You probably won't kill him the first time that he spawns in because... Uh, He's got a pretty high damage output, especially versus uh, weaker frames. So don't worry too much if he kills you. Uh, you'll be able to farm up uh, his mark again. So to view if you are marked for death by him, just go up here to where it says show profile. And you can see that this is marked for death by Stalker. And if you have this little symbol here, you're going to know that uh, there's a chance for him to spawn him randomly in any of your missions pretty much. So yeah, pay attention to that. But... Let's talk about how we can get our next Warframe Rhino. So in that mission, we got the part blueprint for the systems for Rhino. So if we press this here Warframe tab, we can see that I have the Rhino chassis and the Rhino systems. So what we need to do is we need to farm up the resources to craft these parts for our Rhino Warframe, right? So I can craft the chassis right now. I'm going to go ahead and do that. That's going to take 12 hours to complete, right? So we don't have to worry too much about that right now. I want to go out of my way to get the... Um, 
the control modules, the morphics, and the plastids for the Rhino systems. Thing is, I can't actually go to the planets that drop those specific resources yet, so we're not able to carry on with uh, getting Rhino right this minute. But that's okay, because I still haven't got the Neuroptics blueprint that I need to complete the frame, right? So we also need to pick up the blueprint for the frame as well. So if we back out of that and we go up to the market, we type in Rhino on the top left hand corner. We have to pick up this blueprint right here for 35,000 credits. We purchase that and that's going to be added to our foundry as well. So if we go back down there and we go to the Warframe tab, we can see that we now have the Rhino blueprint. We need Gallium alongside the Neuroptics, the chassis, and the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out my way to farm up the Jackal boss to get the Neuroptics again. And then, you know, I'll be able to craft the Neuroptics as soon as I have the resources along with the systems. And then I'll be able to start building my Rhino Warframe. Rhino is sort of like a crutch Warframe. If you get stuck on a piece of content, then Rhino is going to allow you to get through that content with ease. Um... So he's kind of going to make up for everything that you do wrong if you do something wrong, right? Uh, you can do the rest of the content in this game with just Excalibur if you really wanted to. But um, Rhino is there to see if the day if uh, you manage to mess up by following along with this guide. But hopefully by following along with this guide, you won't mess up. So um, yeah, but the next thing that we have to do is go ahead and kill the boss located on the Mercury Junction saying we've completed all of the requirements. So... We're going to go ahead and jump on in there. Okay, so we are in the Mercury Junction. We go ahead, we press the console, walk up to the Warframe, press 2, we spam E after he stops blocking. Let's just go ahead and shoot him, I guess. Okay, put up a shield. Let's whack him again. And he's dead. And we're done. And that's basically the Mercury Junction. Okay, awesome. So that's it. We unlock Mercury. That's pretty much this entire video done if you're just following along to complete Venus. We got a few items from completing that junction there. The most notable of them was the Boltor, right? So the Boltor is a weapon that specializes in puncture damage. And puncture damage is good versus the Grenier enemies, so the enemies that have a yellow health bar. So if you can, go out of your way to farm up the Neurodes to uh, craft this, as well as the other resources if you happen to need them. And you also want to be uh, getting your Taxon as well. So I actually have to go out of my way to get the Ferrite for the Taxon because I crafted my Rhino Chassis, right? So I'm going to go ahead and farm up both the Taxon and the resources for the Bolter as well before the next episode. I'm going to have those crafting. So then by the time that I come to record the next episode, I'm going to have those ready to claim. And then I'm also going to get the Rhino Neuroptics as well. So then if I can craft those, I can start crafting them. And then we can have a Rhino Warframe as soon as possible. But anyway, guys, that is going to be it for this episode of Warframe The Ultimate Beginner's Guide 2.0. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, go ahead, hit that like button below. If you disliked it, hit dislike. Subscribe for more Warframe content, and I will see you guys in the next video.